came suddenly, seemingly out of nowhere, waves came crashing in. High winds of oppositions blew. Fierce emotional trials set in on our soul. The storms of our life seemed to be all but unending. In some local churches, those that had trusted in worship, those that they had trusted in worship with were now gone from their midst. Many of the sheep that we had labored with and for were destitute, dry, and even unresponsive to the local church trying to reach out and give them a helping hand. The enemy flooded our minds with retreat and abandonment. These attacks came on us so suddenly that many of you were ill prepared with a defense for the battle. Just as quickly as the enemy had attacked God's church, you soon found your bearings and your footing and bravery set in and then the battle was in earnest. It was on. Because the enemy knew that we were on to his tactics. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Wave your hand at me. The faithful words found in Corinthians begin to echo in your ears. Watch ye, stand fast in the faith, quit you like men, be strong. Let all your things be done with charity, 1 Corinthians 16, 13, and 14. As a military guard, be on the alert and stay awake. Stand fast by adhering to the faith. Quit you, have your being under control. Take a hold of yourself. My God, sometimes I caught myself just fretting and wringing my hands about everything. And the Bible says, quit you. Take a hold of yourself. Bring yourself under subjection to the Spirit of God. Not under the, under the Spirit of flesh, but take control and act manly in the midst of the battle and in the midst of the storm. Amen. Amen. Take a hold of yourself. Act manly. Be strong. Be strengthened. These five imperatives are critical for your survival and ultimate victory. Be as a sentinel, every alert. When under attack, stand fast in the faith and yield not. Not even an inch. In time of heated battle, take the hero's role. Yes. Yes. <laughs> now be strong and fight the enemy, church of God. This is the key. This is paramount that we must fight the enemy and not one another. Amen. Let all your things be done with charity. 1 Corinthians 16, 14. Let all your things be done with charity. That means I want the best interest for you. And you want the best interest for me. Let all your things be done with charity. The devil will tell you they're just out to get me. <laughs> At Brother Walmsley, when he walked in the other night, he was out to get me. Hadn't said a word to me. Hadn't been around him since the regional convention in Tennessee. He's just out. How do you know? Well, I just think it the way he walked down the aisle. <laughs> now, he's not that way. And I better back up. I didn't get the hells backing me against brother. And I didn't get these folks over here against brother. I better clear all that up. I'm not guilty of that part. <laughs> The Apostle Paul hits to the heart of the matter and it is here that he changes his metaphor. It does not matter the attacks from the outside from the enemy of our soul. The Christian soldier must stand with all courage and boldness against this onslaught. Let me back up and read that again. The Apostle Paul hits to the heart of this matter that all things be done with charity. And it is here that he changes his thought. It does not matter the attacks from the outside, from the enemy of our soul. The Christian soldier must stand with all courage and boldness against this onslaught, and it's coming. But to those within the church, there must be a camaraderie, a closeness, a love that passes all understanding, a love that never retreats, and a love that is so sublime that will never fail us. Amen. Church of God, we must guard this place at all costs. This fellowship of the Spirit that we have with one another and fully realize that we are brothers one of another in arms against our common enemy, not enemies one of another. The enemy's goal is to conquer and divide. Amen. The battles may rage. The blasts from the enemy become more severe. And at times it may seem that we're winning the battle 
And at other times, the casualties, so many that surrender is near. Have you been that way this year? I've been talking about what happened since the close of the assembly to now. You that have been on the front lines this year know perfectly well what I'm saying. When it seems that we have made it to the top, victory is in sight, the enemy recruits his forces and attacks from another stronghold, but praise be to the living God, you never gave up and you never gave in. Amen. And yes, look around you today, there are others that are still standing with you this morning. Amen. That gives me courage today. And there's others that are on their way. Praise God. The story is told, and you've heard this, that the great Napoleon who had never tasted defeat, was one day fighting a losing battle. He sent a message to the drummer boy to beat a retreat, but no retreat was beaten. He sent a second message, message, but still no retreat. Finally, Napoleon himself went, shook the boy by the shoulder roughly and cried, Didn't I tell you to beat a retreat? The boy looked up at the general that he loved through tear-filled eyes and said, Yes, General, you commanded a retreat. I received both of your messages, but I didn't beat the retreat, for I don't know how. When my father taught me to beat the drum, he didn't teach me to beat a retreat. But General, I'll tell you what I can do. I can beat a charge. A smile broke across the face of the General, and as he patted the boy on the shoulder, he said, All right, Sonny, then you beat the charge. The boy did beat the charge. The discouraged, defeated soldiers hearing it thought reinforcements had come. They went out with new courage and zeal. They turned the tide. They won the battle because one little boy said, I don't know how to beat a retreat, but I can beat a charge. Praise God! We might as well beat the beat and the charge into the enemy's stronghold. There is no retreat in the church of God. Amen. There is no running backwards. It's forward, forward, forward for the church of God. Oh, we, if he had one little boy, surely we've got more than that today that said let's go forward in the name of Jesus. The church of God is not in this fight to retreat. The fight is ours to win. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Be assured, saint of God, God has given this battle to the faithful. He is even now depending upon us to lead in the charge. Can you hear the drum beat? Jesus Christ Himself is leading the way. Prophecy's time has come. This is the day. This is the hour. This is the movement, moment in history that we stand and fight. This battle falls on us, the church of God to fulfill all prophecy concerning her. Ephesians 2.20 Built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ Himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom all the building fitly framed together groweth unto an holy temple in the Lord, in whom ye also are built together for an habitation of God through the Spirit. We are that same building, that same habitation that the Apostle Paul was writing to there in the book of Ephesians. Men may sound the alarm of retreat. Men may fear and quake as what happened in 06 and tremble. But I believe that to the faithful we will stand our ground and proclaim by His Spirit we shall be one. Brother Turner, you're in the right place because by His Spirit we shall be one. This church shall fulfill all prophecy. Amen. And it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills and all nations will flow unto it. Isaiah 2.2 2, The mountain of the Lord's house, His church has been past tense. It has been established. Somebody say amen. amen. Also it was prophesied in Psalms. I want you to get that. There shall be a handful of corn in the earth upon the top of the mountains. The fruit thereof shall shake like Lebanon and they of the city 
shall flourish like grass of the earth. Amen. It started with just 12 little kernels of corn and there's more than 12 here today and there's more than 12,000 that are on their way. 12 million on their way.